down town, ta 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 town, how how how. Good morning or afternoon. Dude, we're in the afternoon. By the way, I can't see so good because I got intoxicated last night. I'm hung over, as they say in the biz. And we got a fantastic show here today. Jason Galvin has been dealing with computer issues, so that's why I'm here first. Let's see if he's ready to rock and roll. Jason Galvin, can you hear us? I can. Look at that. I changed browsers. Yeah, Woo! you got to be on the Chrome, dude. Uh, I, well, I'm not. I'm on the Edge. I don't have Chrome downloaded. I was on the uh, Firefox. I've never had a problem with Firefox. Now we're on the Edge. We're okay. living on it. Living on the living Edge. Living on the Edge. Living on the Edge. But I'm disappointed. I didn't get a chance to get a drink. This is, what am I going to do? Well, hurry. You know what? Get one. Oh, oh, okay. Well, you, you, tell, you, tell every, you tell everybody what we're doing. I'll, I'll go get a drink. All right, Jason Galvin. Is, this is going to take a minute. Jason Galvin is super rich. He lives in a five-bedroom, 7,500-square-foot uh, mansion, if you want to call it that. Let's see how long it takes him to get it. But anyways, we uh, Jason Galvin wasn't in St. Louis, so let's not even talk about St. Louis, okay? We're going to move along. But we do have a fantastic uh, show today. We have two very special guests. If you follow us on social media at any point in time, you would know that we have two very beautiful and talented ladies coming in. The, 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 let's just bring them in. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's get let's get this one in here. She's a Hellcat. This is real T I G E R. What's up, Courtney? Hello. Hi, guys or guy. Yeah, with Galvin again. We're waiting to see how long it takes him to go get a drink because he's. Thirsty. I'm sorry. Was that a vacuum? Dude, again, he's got he he probably has a maid in there. He's so rich. Probably. Yeah. Well, I am I am coming to you live from the children's room at the Admirals Club at DFW. Nice. What gate are we talking, Admirals Club? I'm an A. A, okay. And I, I just usually... landed. So I had to say, hey, I don't have a boarding pass, but I have to do a work call. So can I still come in? They, dude, I get in there and I I just go in. I don't even I don't even wait. I just walk by, say hi, how you doing? Delta doesn't let me do that. That'd be my only gripe. My only Delta's gripe. changing it up, Jason Galvin. Yeah, I hear you. Well, but they're but now they're now they're changing it back a little bit because they got lambasted. Listen, here's going to be the start of the show. Galvin non-racing rant. We're good for one of these a show, right? Oh, hold on, Courtney's got plenty. Of, let, let's bring in the other one. Let's bring in five times. Oh, she's here. Is she yeah, here? Let's bring in five times. Hey, Not Eric time. Enders. Hi, how are you? Hey, how are y'all? Eric, are you wearing a master's shirt right there? He is. I is am. it pink? Uh, it's pink, and so are my bracelets. I'm a girl what? today. Shut up, Courtney. <laughs> wow. But you look pretty for working all weekend. Wow. I've been here for 10 seconds. Shut up, Courtney. I haven't washed my hair in three days. Oh, no. so hey, hot. look, I haven't washed mine in two. Check it out. Woo. Yeah. I got a haircut yeah. today. Yeah. Look, I, I wore a 49ers hat at work all day yesterday. It was great. 49ers? Yeah, they beat the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. Smoked the Cowboys last night. Uh, I can beat the Cowboys. I, I don't think the Cowboys know the game started. <laughs> All right, Galvin, give us your rant. Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Okay, listen. Delta. Delta thought they'd be smart to change their reward system around or whatever. You realize that, like, forget me, right? I'm average Joe, whatever. But I got, like, the Delta high-end credit card. Rich. We put a lot of money on it. Okay. Rich. Rich. Amanda Busick's got that credit card, and Homegirl flies to like Antarctica and back 17 times a year, right? Like, and then in between comes to all of our races. She wasn't even like in the medium kids club on the new plan when they announced it. Like her and I were literally just sitting doing the math on it. And she's like, I'm like, I'm like three flights short of even getting into the Delta Sky Club now. Like the girl literally flies halfway around the world other every other weekend. I'm going to tell you they went a little bit too far on their changes there. Just throwing that out there. I think about that all the time when I look at the upgrade list and I fly every single weekend and I'm like 17th on the upgrade list on a What's Tuesday. I'm like, where are you people going right. that you fly more than me? Right. Well, well, who are you? What do you do for a living? Yeah. Well, I, I love it that there's you're 17th on the list for one seat. Dude, Don't I don't need to see how, how far down the list I am. Erica doesn't have these problems. She flies private. First, she flies first, private. First world problems. Yeah. We have first I've, world problems and Erica has what what's it what's above that? PJ problems. Yeah. Yeah. Freeman right. problems. Erica, Freeman, what Freeman how's your day going? Yeah. What what are you doing? Are you just hanging out by the state line, turning holy water into wine? What? 
<laughs> yep, that's exactly what I was doing. How'd you guess? I figured. Yesterday was Erica's birthday. That's right. Happy birthday. Happy Play birthday. Play the song, Jay Love. There it is. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Y'all have Damn. so much energy. <laughs> I don't. I'm actually, I cried on when I landed on the plane. I've had a stressful day. Look, look if this is helpful. Oh. I'm just drinking regular I just water opened just it. to hydrate. I just opened it. Jay, yeah, why are you hungover? Because I was watching football all day yesterday. This was like the weekend of just me sitting around doing nothing. I made food on the grill like a normal person would do as opposed to sitting at a racetrack for 24 hours a day. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to have a cocktail. Well, that turned into 97 of them last night. And when I texted you about the uh, 49ers smoking the Cowboys, I was like, Dude, I probably should go to bed at, at some point. In time. And I had another cocktail. I'm hungover, bro. But anyways, um, so let's talk about uh, Courtney. We'll get into your stuff in a minute, but let's talk Big about it. why why we have you guys on the show because we, Jason Galvin, I say we, but I know I did, and I know you're a responsible person. We saw this a really good little uh, movie, a documentary, a 45, 50 minute little uh, show. About two girls that grew up in drag racing, and I said, "Hey, man, let's go ahead and get these girls on. Let's talk to these people about their lives." And we're Did you watch friends. it, Jason Galvin? Uh, I no. worked a divisional all weekend, so Jason Logan's over here like you were responsible and watched it, right, Galvin? <laughs> I had a four day race in Bakersfield at my home. I got to sleep in my own bed, but I, I had a four day race in the Forty Nine er game last night. So guess what's on Jason's watch list tonight when he puts his kid to bed? Well, I watched Me. it. Yeah. What would you think of it, Jason Logan? That, that, I that, yeah. I enjoyed it. I thought like okay, so we're all friends here. We I, it, it was it St. <laughs> Louis. I, I hung go. out with you, you two you in your uh, hauler and Erica's hauler for like two hours. You know, yeah. got some good quality bonding time, and uh, and we're friends. And I've seen the ride on track. I've seen uh, you know I've seen everything that there is to be seen probably uh, about Courtney and Erica, and. Uh, I thought this one was really good. I thought they they told the story well. I, I liked the whole production of it. I thought it was great. What did you guys think? Erica? I thought it was good. I thought it was very well put together. I was uh, extremely nervous and uneasy about it because, uh, well, let's face it, if you mic us up, you're probably going to hear some things that are slightly inappropriate. And, uh, yeah, I've gotten, like, thousands of emails about it since. But I think the general consensus was that everybody liked it, and it was cool to get a behind-the-scenes look at what we do and, um, you know, how much work Courtney actually does. And <laughs> I know she's gotten crap for it, but I, th I think it came across great. And a lot of people are like, okay, so when's the second episode? So that that's good, I guess. Is there a second episode, or that was just one and done? No, so what's going to happen here with these type of deals is like, when when private companies like Flow Sports Original do stuff like this, you know, um, Netflix can come in, buy it. Like a lot of the stuff that we see on Netflix and Hulu and these streaming services have come from an independent company like this situation. So I don't really know how Flow does this or what they're going to do with it, but um, it could live alone forever and just be as it is in, in the 20 year later story of our deal. Or it could strike some interest and somebody could get with the production company and either buy it or create some kind of reality series of it, whatever it could serve standalone or as a trailer for something in the future, just depending on what kind of waves it makes. So, so this so this um, was a third party company that came into this? It wasn't actually Flow? No, Flow Sports did it. Flow Flow okay. Sports has a company, it's Flow Films is what yeah. it is. So um, Flow has over 500 people that work for it and there's a bunch of different divisions and everything in the films company they get a certain amount of projects that they do a year and they divvy it up between all of the verticals, you know, grappling, cheerleading, basketball, track, racing, yada, yada, yada. And um, at our Christmas or at our um, summer offsite in 2022, we kind of had a, a whiteboard brainstorming meeting and um, <clears throat> I talked about some stories in drag racing, brought up the Coletta family, didn't bring up Erica and I because we already have a movie. Um, so uh, you do? At, well, the first one. So um, after that meeting, they kind of came to me and were like, they loved the story once they met Richard, once they met Erica, once they came to a drag race with me. Um, and uh, they just decided that drag racing was going to get a little bit of the Flow Films love. And they started filming it last year at Pomona, 2022, the World Finals. 
And then uh, they came to the shop. I think it was earlier this season, wasn't it, Erica? Like March or something. Uh, came to the shop and did the rest of the filming and edited it for about four or five months. And then it came out. So um, it's nobody in the flow racing department, but it was just flow films. Got it. Nice. So uh, I, I, most people know your whole origin story here, Erica. Um, and and I, I like the fact that it went back into, you know, old videos and pictures of, uh, of you guys, uh, you know, with your old, old sponsor, everything like that. What I kind of liked uh, was how your dad got in the mix of all of this. And uh, he talked about how he used to fight people because they would come down <laughs> on you guys. How many fights did your dad actually get in? And how many times did your dad actually get beat up or did he win them all? <laughs> yeah. What was Greg Ender's boxing record at the race? Track? Yeah. I mean, he definitely had to have a, a like a one loss record out there. Where did they go? Do you see them? Okay. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> Y'all went away. My dad was like a, was he like go? A, a state champ world wrestler or a, a champion wrestler, wasn't he, Erica? Yes. Go ahead. You can talk about that. Oh, well, no, he wrestled in high school and college and in the Air Force, and then he was special forces in the Air Force. So even though he's not exactly six foot tall, he's uh, he's pretty tough. And while he's like the nicest, most well-spoken, awesome, reserved, button down collar, penny loafer guy, he will whoop your ass. That's like, not the guy I know, ass. by the way. <laughs> and he's always packing. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, that's not the guy I know, but button down, well mannered guy. I mean, well, that's because you it, you've yeah. been that's at our you weddings. You see drag racing, Greg Enders. They're, they're and wedding. Okay. Enders. <laughs> yeah, dad, dad at weddings. Enders. Got it. Um, yeah. So, what age, Erica, did you start drag racing? And I and I, again, we're I'm going to go through the, this whole thing because some people probably have never seen right on track. <laughs> that's not actually possible. Kelvin. Right, I, everybody has seen Right on Track. Come on, I must have watched that movie seventy four times before I got to high school. Like, I just found out you're younger than me too, which is crazy. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> like, I apologize. Like, I thought, gee, I mom, mom, Chris if you're watching, you're now on Eric Ender's shit list because I'm younger than her. Right? <laughs> like, like Chris McGaha, they were saying about him, he was in the junior drag racing league. I'm like, what? I thought he was like sixty, but he's not. He's like years older than me <laughs> so um yeah i apparently i'm bad at guessing ages but no i started junior drag racing when i was eight it was the same year that nhra came out with the with the league and my dad at that time was a sportsman racer so i saw the article in national dragster and i asked him if i could drive so um he bought me a car and courtney being three years younger than me um as soon as she turned eight she started as well so we both competed in the junior drag racing league until we were 16 and then I went to Frank Holly's and got my super calm dragster license and you can race juniors until your 18th birthday. So I kind of like doubled back and still raced at the big junior races and then raced my super comp and super gas cars. And then same with Courtney, when she turned 16, she got her big car license and has raced everything from what Courtney, super street stock, super stock. She's I was a go car gal. Yeah. Yeah. So you're a go-kart gal. No, I was the door, door car. gal. Erica, like Erica car. went to, Trying to imagine you in a go kart and like everybody get out of the way. Incoming. Yeah, no, I'd probably be good. No, Erica was the super comp, super gas route, and I was the started in super street and a Camaro, and then went to stock, super stock, and um, did a little bit of dragster stuff. But uh, but yeah, then I quit, and Erica became the the star. Yeah, and one but one thing I got from this uh, this I saw this, the eyeball. Yeah, this television show uh, that Erica is monomaniacal about practice 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 she's going to get it right every day here's Courtney. that's a big word for you buddy monomaniacal thank you very much yeah to use this big how do you sometimes. spell that m-o-n a call that's it that's how you Courtney, spell. And I were on the phone yesterday. <laughs> Courtney and I were on the phone yesterday and uh, she's like how do you spell that I'm like could you use it in a sentence and she used it in a sentence I'm like perfect I know the meaning but I still can't spell it so right. <laughs> but yeah yeah but like, uh, what's, the, what's the country of origin on that, Jason? Yeah. Uh, that, I believe that Latin? it would be Prussian, oh. uh, <laughs> turn of the century Prussian. So, but what we got out of it, Erica is all about the the craft of of drag racing. Courtney was there at drag racing because she was good. She just jumped in the car, did it, and wanted to flirt with the boys and have a have a good time socially out there. Wow, well, a lot's Erica, changed. 
I know, right? It, 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 she's still doing her thing. Erica, would you like just yell at Courtney? Like, you, how are you doing this? You're so much, you don't even try. Cause I have a brother and a sister. And I, I was, I was more like you, Erica. And my brother would get in there and just like, yeah, whatever. I got this. And he would be better than me. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not the way this works. Yeah. Well, Courtney's good at everything. And she was like that in all the sports that we played, volleyball, she basketball, does. track, um, drag racing, whatever. She also did competitive cheerleading and dance and all this stuff. And I can't clap to the beat. And this hooker over here can like dance a jig in front of everybody. <laughs> so yes, she's always been better. And it's always like come naturally to her. Whereas I just worked at it to become better. I still can't dance though, and I'm not trying either. She always gets tries to get me to do TikToks, and I'm like, no. It would be it would pop off so much harder if she was in my TikToks. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, like we play a game. As soon as I post something on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok, how long until somebody says, "Where's Erica?" Dion and I play this game, and it's always the first comment, "Where's Erica?" Well, Erica's on her own account, whereas I'm on my account. <laughs> <laughs> right but you but you courtney definitely run her social media account so if you think erica's posting stuff she why. does sometimes actually sometimes and i get nervous sometimes i was at the race this weekend and it said erica enders you know posted to her story or whatever and i was like uh oh what'd she do she's gone rogue she's gone rogue but no she does sometimes and you, i feel like you can tell the difference when she does it and when yeah. i do it I can't definitely. I can always tell the difference on when she's the one commenting on people's Facebook posts and you're the one doing it for her. Very easy to tell the difference. Yeah, we're we're working yeah. on that. Yeah. I'm one, in one, one of one of you is far more direct than the other one. Yeah. Well, and it's fun too because a, a growing up like really? this, and growing up is like really the only girls at the time. Uh, racing, you guys had to, you guys had to stick together and you fought, you know, you, you had to prove the boys wrong. You had to do all this stuff, but you, you know, you definitely have Erica's back and, and I'm sure Erica has your back sometimes, but I know she knows you're going to, you're Greg Ender's daughter. That's just going to go out there and scrap it up with people if need be. Yeah. Drop a yeah, bow. Yeah. yeah. Let's ask the important question here. Yeah. Which one of you two is the better wrestler? <laughs> Courtney's way more scrappy. Yeah, I'll yeah. I'll win. Yeah, definitely. Because I, I she she's got the whole little sister thing. Like I gotta take care of my big sister. Make sure she does her I thing. I do, I do, and especially out there because Erica doesn't need to be. They, her space is protected. I I like to protect her space so that she can go out there and do. Like I tell Richard all the time when he messes with her, I said, "Don't mess with her. She has a job to do that benefits us all. Just leave her alone." But I protect her space and cut off her autograph line. And if people are kind of being shitty to her, whatever, so where she doesn't have to be the bad guy. But there's this picture that I really really love of us. I think it was St. Louis last year after she won. Kids, what happened? Uh, guys, wait until you hear about this picture. It's so good. <laughs> she's so good. She's here. frozen. Oh, she's back now. She's back. Literally frozen in time. That nice club. man, wait until she sees the pictures of where she's frozen. <laughs> I've had a bad day. Y'all leave me alone. <laughs> Well, Erica, talk about that too. I mean, Courtney's out there defending your name and honor. How hard is it to be, you know, a celebrity out there? You know, you're out there and people are coming at you all day long. They, they want a piece of Erica. I mean, I get hit up all the time. We've talked about this before, Courtney and I, uh, people trying to give me, sell me uh, VIP access to your your pit area. I mean, you're, you're, you're a target. How hard is that to be, to deal with? Or do you just leave that up to Courtney to fight your battles <laughs> on that one? No, I mean, I try my best to handle it. And I also try, like, here's my politically correct answer. Like, I try to remember when I was a fan and how the drivers treated me when I was on the other side of the rope. So I keep that in mind and I spend as much time as I can out there. On the other side of that, you cannot please everybody. And they also forget that they're like literally at my job while I'm working. So when I'm running valves or changing valve springs or putting spark plugs in, don't stand there and scream and holler my name because I'm not going to stop my job and mess up what I'm doing to come take a picture with you. But I will gladly as soon as I'm done. So for the most part, everybody's really 
uh, nice and respectful. And my only other pet peeve is like when you're like having supper or something or a meeting or a serious conversation and they're like, hey, hey, I don't mean to interrupt you, but, you know. Right. But I, I'm, I, I also realized that one day it'll all go away. So I'm really thankful for it. Yeah, because somebody told me, somebody told me the other day, like, listen, if it wasn't for the fans, we wouldn't be out here. And I'm like, I get it, I understand. But when you're yelling at me, oh, hey, oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Uh, does that for that person's first name start with the letter E? No. Damn wow. It. So you weren't, you weren't getting lectured. That's impressive. no, no. Oh, but was uh, it Joe? What was it? Was it Joe? It's always Joe. Joe. It sounds like Joe. Yeah. It's a Joe it's thing. A, I had yeah, to think about the way you said it. The way you said it, I yeah. should have picked up on that. But, you know, like I had in St. Louis, I had somebody yelling at me because I'm like right there by the. You're in field. the danger zone. Yeah. Hey, radio guy. Radio guy. And I'm like sitting there. I have the microphone in my hand and I am talking on it. Radio guy. I go, it's Mr. Radio guy to you, lady. <laughs> And it's like it's like guys we're working here yeah you gotta it, it, sometimes people just don't know their place i had but, like uh, five people call me life's a drag guy at the divisional this weekend which was well there cool. you go i was like wow look at that it's coming we're famous yeah famous this one time at indy that i was really pissed off and i'm and i don't mean this year i realize that can be confused but we were towing back and on the way down there this lady called courtney like all these names and she got down there and she's like i don't understand like i don't know what blah 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 and i'm like well where she's at well as soon as we where is she at as soon as we come around the corner she's still yelling and hollering and calling us names and all this stuff and i freaking come unglued in front of the Shirley Muldowney grandstands at the U.S. Yep. Nationals. Like, tell this lady, bitch, come to my pit. I'll whoop your butt, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, you should come down. You should come down. <laughs> she took, so it was the Shirley Muldowney thing. So Erica, golf cart's going. Erica pulled her car up next to it and was like, yo. <laughs> well, was that, wasn't that the same she lady? had a very Shirley-like moment. Ironically, that's a very Wasn't Shirley-like that the same moment. lady in uh, Pomona that rolled yes. into the hotel? Yes. Dude. At the at the uh, in the lobby, she was yelling, and we had her escorted out. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, Jason Galvin. I've never seen. I was not there. I've never seen like all her guys. Like it, it, you, when you watch this video, you'll realize that Erica makes the statement like, "Hey, you know, I'm just we have two girls with all our big brothers are running around here, and all these guys. They, I mean, if you look at Erica the wrong way in some places." They are ready to go at a moment's notice. And this lady walked into this hotel, and I was going up to my room, and all of a sudden, I saw Richard Freeman jump out of a chair. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to my room yet. Hold on. This is gonna be <laughs> and, man, Richard got in this lady's face and just told her to sit down and get out of the hotel. And all of a sudden, security rolls in, but and Erica was just sitting there, just kind of quiet, like, okay, these guys got it. They it was really it. bad. It was bad. It was because- bad. The lady started saying something, and at first we thought she just wanted her autograph or something, and I wasn't really paying attention. I was talking to somebody else, and once it kind of escalated, I think Jenna or somebody was like, Courtney, what's go?" Like some some ladies in right. Erica's face, and I just immediately didn't ask any questions, went and get in the middle, and we start yelling, and Richard gets involved, and her husband gets involved, but this woman was like coming in hot, like extra hot. I know that the Freemans and all of us can kind of be – a vibe of a sort, but this lady was in Erica's face. You bitch, you this, you that, she was. you said this, yada yada yada. And Erica was just like the hell. So Erica, we had Erica sit down and we handled it. Yeah. Oh no, it was uh, I, 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 surgical strike. I mean, that lady came in hot, and then Courtney and Richard boom, jumped up. There it are was- there are few things at the racetrack, and and I genuinely mean this. Few things at the racetrack that I enjoy more. Than Richard Freeman getting on the chip, because like, <laughs> I I feel like Richard Freeman literally literally sits there like waiting for his opportunity to get on the chip. Like I haven't. He's been a lot better him. lately. I mean, he, he has, and I'm disappointed about it. Right. It's so I know. I know. He's been like because when he's got this new Richard gets on life. the like when Richard gets on the chip. Um, like, you better hope you were 100% right because if you leave a, a little yeah. window, <laughs> no, like, he's coming in. Right hook. <laughs> yeah, he comes in hot. Dude. So, what, because you guys, and we'll just stay with Richard, what's the funniest thing you've ever heard Richard Freeman say? No. Because, because that, that dude makes me laugh. Just like one day he called me out of the blue, like, and he's like, Jason, hi. 
um, I need you to run over here to the shop and get to, I, I'm like, and I just let him go for about a minute and a half. I go, Richard, you got the wrong Jason. I go, <laughs> I'm in Orlando. He goes, what the fuck? My, and then oh. he's like, uh, up in, <laughs> he thought it was Logan, Logan. Yeah, on he, our team. yeah Logan. Yeah. And he gets, He's like, hey, I need you over here. I need you to get this stuff. Logan, get over here. I'm like, uh, dude, you got the wrong Logan, bro. Wrong Logan. Oh, yeah. boy. I do that all the time. I text Jason Logan when I mean to text Logan <laughs> all the time. Uh, I texted our airplane manager the other day, like, where are our rental cars? Like, where are they at? We're here at the FBO. But I didn't text the right Chad. I text Chad Head from Coletta. He's like, listen, I'd be happy to help you with rental cars, but... Uh... <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, there's reason, the, reason uh, the funny part of that too. The funny part of that too is Chad's probably like, FBO, did did they put Connie's name this weekend? Right. <laughs> I didn't so, know that. That's funny. So yeah. because you guys Wait, were grew up so, super so, so Jason, you asked him what the funniest thing they heard Richard say was. Yeah. And, oh. and then you went on a rant about Richard. So there's a lot of stupid crap Richard says. Like that lady that was in there and he yelled at her and he's like, hey. You need to shut up. And she's like, what are you going to hit a woman? He goes, no, but where's your husband? I'll whoop his ass right now. <laughs> That's so true. I heard that. That was great. Uh, but, what's, the, um, what's, the line that, what's the line that you like, Logan? Is it you or Joe who loves his uh, crickets? If the crickets had pistols, the birds wouldn't F with them. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's it's things like that that are just like, yeah. what did he just yeah. say? Hotter, hotter than a fresh f fox in a forest fire. Yeah. Colder than a witch's booby in a brass bra. Uh, yep. What else dumb does he say? Crazier than a waltz and piss ant. Waltz and piss ant. My, I'm so hungry. My stomach thinks my throat's been cut. If I had to, if it cost a quarter to piss, I'd have to throw up or something like that. <laughs> he's, he's so dumb. He's so he really dumb. Is dumb. I, I, I love it though. But that those those southern colloquialisms. I can't. Jason. Remember. Jason does. Jason does a very good Richard Freeman though. Like I like. It's not I just quite like as when good he as. He starts talking like this. And he starts getting. His, he's twisting. His, he's yeah, twisting. he's twisting his chin. <laughs> chin. He said I he used to, to twist his head hair, but he doesn't have any anymore. So mine, he doesn't. Mine. Mine won't grow far enough for me to do that. So I. Like, <laughs> I keep trying. This is like it. this long. I'm like, cut your beard. It does right. See, it just it so doesn't great. work. He, he's definitely a character at the racetracks. Um, so let's go back to growing up. You guys are super famous. You did a Disney movie. What and and uh, Courtney, you tried to send us uh, the Donnie and Marie episode. But what was one of the cooler uh, things you guys got to do by uh, just because you guys were super famous and on Disney Channel? Did you, you guys walk the red carpet? You guys do all that fun stuff. Um, I think the coolest thing for me was meeting Jessica Bill at Donnie Marie show. Like that was that was pretty sick. I was a big Seventh Heaven fan, and this was before the movie and before Beverly played Erica. So we met Jessica. She invited us out there and my mom and I went back to California to see Cameron Ferre whenever I was in, in high school. And uh, we went to the seventh heaven deal set, watched them film, met Beverly. She had no idea. And then like four years later, that all came about, which was kind of a, a small world kind of deal. But I think for me, the Jessica Biel thing was probably the coolest. The so I basically know Justin Timberlake. There you go. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> The ESPYs so was cool, Courtney. Yeah, we did the, ESPYs the red carpet cool. at the ESPYs, yeah. At how old? Whenever uh, I was nominated for the first one, oh, I think okay. 15, 14, 15. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you 20. guys went like because of the movie or something. Like, no, we went. I went to some red carpet event with Beverly in LA, but I don't remember what it was for. It had to be something she did. I don't know, but yeah. Now, going to the ESPYs, uh, that big production, and uh, you get all gussied up. I, I remember seeing pictures of that whole thing. Did you write, like, if you had won, did you write, like, an acceptance speech, or were you ready to rock and roll? No. If I won, I would have winged it. But I don't I don't even know if, like, Best Driver got to talk, I don't think. Because no, it's not they a sport. They but, don't yeah. announce it. During commercial breaks at the ESPYs, they would – on the screen have the awards for the ones they weren't going to announce because that year was a special year and Caitlyn Jenner talked for about 48 minutes. So they didn't announce all the winners that year. He, got, she got the Arthur Ashe courage award. Oh uh, yeah. You got stood up. You got shown up by, uh, by, um, her, by him, her. What yeah. Well, I went and fairness, got a cocktail. She's, 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 she's kind of rich, you know, so money, 
definitely buys things in that world. And it's and he, hard. when he was he, he did some awesome sports stuff. He was so, great. Yes, yeah, he was. But, but yeah, was. so that was that was. Wait, hold on. Was Can we go back? How do you end up on Donnie and Marie before Right on Track came out? Like, how the hell does that happen? My parents. My dad was just so good at blasting us. I don't know how that came about. I was like eleven. Yeah, somewhere in there. Math. Shoot, yeah. that was math. Carry the one. Um. <laughs> That's a bath club right there. Thank so you. Is that, how the, is that how the Disney movie happened? Did some somebody from Disney see that interview? No, the like, Disney movie like, happened like, when like, when Courtney and I both won the spring nationals, I think, in Dallas. Um, we were the first sisters to win a national event together, and People Magazine did an article on us, and one of the Disney executives read the article, and their people contacted my dad, and from that phone call till the time the movie was released took five years. So it was, they saw us in people and it was during a time where they were doing a series of movies about females and male dominated sports. Um, they had double teamed about the twin sisters that played basketball and went to the WNBA. They had motocross about the little girl that cut her hair to look like a boy and raced right. motorcycles yeah. because they wouldn't let her. And then our movie, so kind of cool. Who, who <laughs> cut their hair like a girl? Or boy, it's moto, it was a motocross. Motocross does the. You name never of watched the movie? motocross? Yeah. No. I motocross only came out like huge. either right before With or all right of after. The children right that you have, you've never seen that movie. No. Listen, I the, had. To... In fairness, in fairness, when when half the children are illegitimate and you don't know where they live. Like... Right. I, I do travel a lot. I do travel a lot. Yeah, also, no, I they're to... much younger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They well, are. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, not to not to date all of us here, but those were movies I watched when I was like in middle school or high school. Or something. When you were younger than me. Yeah, right. Yeah. Justin's calling you out, Jason. Turns out, turn turns out, turns out I'm still younger than you. Thank you. It's, it, it doesn't change. Thing, watching um, wants me up to want to kick butt, take names, get the check, and go to the house. <laughs> wow, good job, Leslie. There you go. That was my quote. Yep. There you go. I like um, it. Uh, what was what what was your favorite non right on track Disney movie? I don't know. Courtney, Courtney didn't watch them. No, not no. Not right on track. I don't know. Like made for TV or like The Little Mermaid. Yeah, or no. Like like like. Come on. Right on track came out at a time where like the Disney Channel had like eight hundred original movies come out. Right. I won't there lie. Was I was a Smart I House. Was... There was. Uh, 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 what was the the skater one? Uh, there was Johnny, whatever Johnny Tsunami. Like, come on, everybody had their favorite. I I liked Xenon Girl the twenty. Xenon, yeah. Well, they made like eight of those, right? I yeah. loved Xenon. Yeah, Cadet Kelly. Boom, boom, boom. make my like, heart go zoom, zoom, zoom. Cadet Kelly, like, we're great. I I, I Allie. Just Allie's been asked for Erica's autograph twice. Do you I sign him? Allie. That's the real question. Do you sign him? Okay, because true story. Because true story. One time, so the first like professional place I ever announced racing was at Phoenix International Raceway when I was in college. So I was like, you know, a hundred pounds skinnier and had no beard, and people thought I looked like Kyle Busch. And I literally at one point was walking through like the parking lot with my wife and had, but I had sunglasses on, and literally some guy was like Kyle Busch, Kyle Busch, and I literally was like. Okay. Thanks, man. Thanks for being a fan. <laughs> I've signed her name before. Long ago, but I've signed her name before. I'm not going to tell you what I've done because it's totally wrong, but I've signed other famous drag racers' names on T-shirts and shot them out. Hey, who wants an autographed shirt from? <laughs> <laughs> yep, I've done that. So if you got a, a signed this is t where <laughs> This is where Life's a Drag podcast finally gets shut down by the NHRA. <laughs> I know, right? Listen, hey, hey, wait, look, what, what are we on? Episode 14 or 15? Like we've made it's it It's longer 16. than I thought. We've, we've yeah. made it way further than Joe Costello's over under on this was one and a half. So Aw, that's yeah. rude. He, he's he had, passive aggressive, that Joe he, Costello. He did not have much faith. It, yeah, he, <laughs> he was not feeling it. Listen, NHRA well, has some really great people considering, like the Jasons, Allie Bland, Nikki. Like you go down the list of the people that they have, and you're just like, wow. Because usually you have to have it like personality bypass but y'all are awesome hey speaking of people we miss hi angie smith hi angie, angie smith, hope, hi. hope you feel hope you're feeling better i've had some family members go through what she's going through with the skin grafts and stuff and that is not fun so hang in there 
so tough though man it's oh, I know she is. Speaking, speaking she of people I would never want to get in a fight with, like Same. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you she know, looked, you know how you know how Courtney protects Erica? I feel like I feel like you would think Matt would protect Angie, but it's no. probably the other way around, right? Like yeah. <laughs> somebody talks shit to Matt and Angie's like, <laughs> I would not another like, fun one to she, watch she, over. Ter- she would terrify me if she hit me. Like mm-hmm. uh, oh. one of the other ones over there, Angel Sampe. Do you don't don't even get cross with her. Yeah, no. really, she like she a like a black belt in jujitsu. Jujitsu, yeah. yeah. She'll tie up like a pretzel and freaking. I've seen it happen. And I'm like, nope. Hard pass. Hard pass. Hard pass. Hard pass. <laughs> Hard pass. Um, yeah. So, um, well, let's see whatever. Let's we'll see what Matt and Angie. Y'all remember, I have nothing to do. I kind of got in a battle with Matt before he left because I wanted to come to Texas. Well, you start, hey, you started that you started that with an Angie impression that I thought was going to be pretty good, but it tailed off pretty quick. I try not I, to. I'm, it, I'm not going to lie. I half expected Angie to show up in Dallas somehow. Like it wouldn't she, shock me if she finds a way to. Like, she'll be there sooner than anyone thinks. I'm sure. Right. Yeah. I my I'll tell you a fun Angie Smith story. Seeing we're talking about her, and she'll love this one too. Um, one year at the banquet, which is coming up at HRA prom. Or ladies, have you gotten your dresses yet? Are we ready to go? I did. Erica has. I am not. That was in the two hours we sat there. Erica was fl- flashing through. You like that dress, Jason? What about that one? What about? I that? was. I was getting your opinion. Yeah, I. This is what I do. Full service, man. Um. Anyways, we're there, at, and I'm sitting with Matt and Angie. Uh. At their table, they're like, "Hey, come sit with us." And I'm like, "Okay, you're kind of too close to the stage, and I don't know when to see what's going on." But you know how they put, you know, two bottles of wine on the table for everybody that uh-huh. can drink. Well, we had run out of bottles of wine. Selena was there. There was everybody was at this table. We we're having a great time. So I walked around going, oh, I, I, "I'm your new, I'm your waiter. Would you guys like a nice you pour some more wine?" And I basically grabbed the full bottles off of other people's table. And then replace it with the empty bottle. <laughs> I would take it back to our table. I was stealing wine. It was the funniest thing I've ever done. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Th- th- see, Angie, she's like, we had that's, all the bottles. That's where the show gets shut down, by the yeah, way. We've, yeah, we've done it. We, and, we blew, and I'll get blamed we blew, for it. We blew right past uh, signing signing fake yeah. drivers' names and straight, straight into – uh, well, they Jason. are kind of stingy with the booze. I mean, spend millions of dollars and put a bunch of fans in the stands, and here's two free drink coupons. Thanks for coming. And also, hey, forget right? if they're hey. free or not. The line at the bar outside is just hey, so um, long. Hey, don't worry. Don't worry. I have been assured that the bar situation will be much improved this year. Yes. It was because bad last year. It was a train wreck last year. Yeah. And, 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 and believe me, our bosses at NHRA – probably heard about it 600 times before the ceremony even started yeah. they knew <laughs> they, they knew <laughs> they weren't arguing they weren't trying to tell you that it wasn't bad it was bad it's the success of that event has a lot to do with alcohol uh yeah uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah i had to work last year for the first time at it and uh it, our boss is like hey man don't drink during the show you can't drink during the show and i had joe costello like bringing me drinks to the side every time uh, Strike three. Would see it, he would get so upset with me. But then somebody on this show, their wife got me just hammered at the after party of which I DJed. Jason Galvin's wife and I became best friends that night. Oh, I danced with your wife at that night. I remember. You did. You did. <sighs> yes. I think er- Erica at that point might've, might've already removed herself. I never even there. entered. Yeah. It was what happened, fun. Erica? You didn't want to go? No, ever since the banquet in 2015, I've not been a huge proponent of the after party because, yeah, women suck. And so we have our own after party. Oh, uh, that's a good call. Yeah. Got it. Well, well maybe, you know, maybe, I, maybe Logan and I will come crash at your after party this year. You're I more can't than welcome. Because I have to DJ. I have to work yeah, no, the I stayed, day. I stayed with Jason at the main one this year. So <laughs> this year, I think I'm going to wear sneakers with my dress, and then I will be more apt to partake in the after hours portion Excellent. because usually my feet are killing me. But this Excellent. year, I'm going to be wearing comfortable shoes. Excellent. Last year, a funny. This is a behind the scenes podcast. Last year was funny. At 1:30 in the morning, I get a text from. Um, am I frozen again? No. Nope, no. Good. Okay, I get a, a text from Badia, and it's like, hey. Erica's trophy and envelope are like in the middle of the room and no one's claimed it. 
So, so we were a little intoxicated and I brought the whole fun crew, the whole party crew back and we had to pick up Erica's championship uh, trophy and everybody that was still there from NHRA thought it was the funniest thing ever that like Erica forgot her trophy. And then, and then we all walked with the trophy. I the think casino. Chase tried to bet it on red at the roulette table too. <laughs> I mean, uh, see now, now Courtney's frozen, and that is an amazing like. How yeah, quick was Damn it, I couldn't get my phone quick enough. Um, yeah, the uh, look on your face where you froze there was all time. Yeah, I had um, I had way yeah. too many drinks at the after party, and Courtney's like, "Come on, we're all going out." It's like it was like her. We're going streaking moment where you guys were just running around with a trophy, and I'm like, we I were. can't even focus right now. I had like 15 drinks in a two hour time period because I had to make up for not drinking all day and peeing Look, at the, at the, the there's a, there is a, there is a, there is a, a Galvin proc family, um, Hawaii trip that begins the day after the banquet. So we have 11 AM flights out of LAX, which is like a two hour and 20 minute drive from where we Ew. have the banquet. So I think there's a good chance. I may not go to bed after the banquet. Like that's a good call. So that's I, the party we, crowd. You're the yeah. party crowd then. Yeah, we we may we may be all night in it. Yeah. Cause I, I like my biggest concern is like we're gonna go to bed at three and I'm gonna have to be up at six and that ain't gonna happen, right? Like, but I'd they left just... that diner open and I had some amazing French toast and scrambled eggs that night. Oh yeah, we brought your trophy yeah. and set it on the table. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the it's... trophy the trophy should have had like a GoPro on it. That was such a cool night. NHRA prom is definitely a fun night and it's a good time. People get a it little is. loose. They get a little loose. It is a it linguistic stiff. experience. It starts stiff, and then about three quarters of the way through the banquet, it falls off fast. Yeah, and by the way, we ain't staying at this after party all night. I I can't be working. The literally, I've been in that ballroom at nine a.m. and I don't. I didn't leave the after party till. Like but we stayed thirty. We you guys are fun. You. Yeah, Evan was like, hey, man, why is – because I took a picture and everybody was out dancing. The dance floor was packed. And he's like, why are you still going? It's like 1 in the morning. I go, dude, what do you want? It was packed. Go. It was packed. It the was funny thing is the after party actually really struggled early on. Yes. It did. Because, because the, the bar situation wasn't good, and it was kind of in a funky spot. Like It ended up, I think, in really nice – but like when people walked in at first, it had very much like a, like a, eighth like grade eight dance. Like they had one, well, a little bit, yes, yeah, yeah, mixed with, mixed with like a cigar lounge. Like I kept looking around for like where the cigars were, right? Like the way the lighting was and like the big comfy chairs that were there or whatever. And then like I don't even remember who it was, but like, it might have been Leah. Like somebody showed up eventually and like got out there and started dancing. And then, like, I remember Sarah Slaughter being, like, right behind them. And then my wife was like, finally, somebody. And she got out there, and Courtney showed up. And next thing I know, I turned around, and it was just, like, there were zero guys dancing. We were all standing around drinking. But, like, all of a sudden, there were 30 girls on the dance floor. And I was like, ah, all right. Jason, what song go. was it? What song was it that turned it around? Uh, and, and I want you to recognize that I'm playing that for uh, Pro Stock intros now. Yeah. Uh, it was Mr. Brightside. Mr. Brightside. And, and the best everything. The best is like, you know, I'm not going to, this is going to sound uh, completely, totally bad. And Erica, if you don't want to be part of this conversation, I just, yeah, I get it. I get it. You're five times. We don't <laughs> have a lot of African American uh, people in our group. There's some. Antron, Lauren, the videographer, she's there. Lauren Adams. Sarah? And Lauren. Lauren Adams was like, hey, man, you need to be playing this. Play Drake. Did it? I go, Lauren. Do you see the amount of white people we have out here? I go, there you go. That's it right there. I said, Lauren, there's too many white people. And then Brad Gerber, VP of sales or whatever he is. And I, I on the microphone, I go, Brad Gerber, super white guy. And dude, <laughs> it was at that point in time. And then I played Mr. Brightside, the place with bananas, one of the whitest songs Look. ever. Okay. So good. There's the trophy. There it is. There it is. In How fairness, funny. hey, in fairness, Brad Gerber is a is a, a very white gentleman. White. White. Like, all right, listen, man. Which is wild because Brad Gerber literally lives at the beach. Yeah. Like so funny. I live um, at the beach. Yeah. yeah, we got there's Andy Smith. Wait. Oh, that's no, yeah. that's oh, 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 oh
I just saw blonde hair and thought we since Angie was here. You're right. That's definitely Jenna. See, but this is what I'm talking about. It gets loose. <laughs> it gets loose out there. When you, got, when you see that, you're like, okay. But uh, yeah, man. So it'll be fun this year. But, uh, from what I understand, because everybody, nice, look at that. Everybody likes to take pictures in front of the big NHRA banners. There's going to be 95 feet of NHRA banners now uh, with this thing. So we'll get into the yeah. after party like yeah. later. Look, the bank, I'm telling you, for those of you out there, who are like, oh, the banquet last week. I had some people who like they didn't like, necessarily love the banquet or whatever. From everything that I'm hearing, the banquet this year is going to be lit. I'm just. How does a banquet get lit? Like, it's just going to be significantly better than last year. So how about that? I had a great time yeah. last year, but it's always my birthday, so I'm always drunk. Yeah, that's a good call. <laughs> Erica, what did you do for your birthday? Just, you just out of curiosity, excited? wait, real quick, Courtney, how, how would your birthday uh, affect affect that? Because I have multiple reasons to party because Erica won the championship. I'm right. like, oh, she gave me a championship for my birthday. Oh. I think you're missing my point here being that I have, I have seen I heard, you, I hear you Jason. multiple times. <laughs> I don't think you need to have a birthday for that. Listen, I went to your birthday party. You shut your mouth. You did. You did. You shut your <laughs> mouth, Mr. You, so you, you know who didn't come to my birthday Erica. party? Erica. 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 Too, too cool. She's I never cool. get invited to anything. First off, you no, got invited. Not, you were on an true. airplane already. She was on the PJ. Yeah, not you true. were on an airplane. See, that's the downfall of the PJ is like, hurry up and take winter circle pictures so you can get out of here. I'm like, where is the guy that just wanted to qualify and went around? And now we're winning all these races and we got to hurry up and go home. So that's the part that sucks. So yeah, your I don't birthday, think you've celebrated. You do, okay, go ahead. My birthday, um, yesterday I slept in, which I love to do. And then um, I didn't do a whole lot. I, we we're going to go shoot skeet, um, but it turned out to be a really windy day yesterday. And then we ended up just going to this restaurant on the water in Houston and uh, having cocktails and appetizers and dinner and cocktails and it was fun so you're in houston now or are you just in houston just for your birthday i'm in houston for my birthday nice okay. i'm going to fort worth tomorrow to see my sister yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> don't sound so excited no uh, well, no okay let me explain myself oh, let me, oh, damn it here right. comes erica oh. let me explain myself the reason we were going to do this anyway, but there's a flow guy coming in, a video guy, and we're going to be doing some content pieces for the pro race. And we're starting with Erica tomorrow. So I'm going to be filming at Motorplex all week. And Erica's is the first piece tomorrow. So that was the oh shit. Not the Erica part, but the work part. <laughs> but I chose to go shopping because that's my hobby, apparently. Apparently. By mm -hmm. the way, you got enough money for it. Aren't you worth like $56 million or something? 56 million dollars ladies and gentlemen for those of you out here who are wondering like when i grow up i want to be a pro stock driver how how valuable is that career erica enders has a net worth of 50 that's awesome million per, per the google machine hey by the way look, by the way it's on the Jay internet it must be true yeah. it's when, true when, when jason and i saw that we both were like hey uh you want to get married? We both were like, we, we Five seconds apart, we sent a message. Like, wait, want to get married? It's 56 million. Yeah, Jason Logan's putting together a PowerPoint presentation for me. Yeah, so so Galvin in St. Louis, we're in the, I'm in there at Holler, just hanging out, talking. Hours. Hours. And we're just sitting there, and I go, you know, Erica, I think I'd be the perfect boyfriend for you. I go, this, I think I would be perfect. And she goes, I said something, and she goes, what, are you trying to sell me? I go, done. Make it a PowerPoint. It's going to be awesome. He was wait, trying to sell me. Wait, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna sell I'm, you. Wait, hold on. First off, yes, Courtney, it's okay. One of us will marry you too. Okay, because uh, what, what were you? I'm worth? not worth 56 million. No, but well, you were Google... worth what 12 or 11? Like, yeah, it said. Um, well, it says that I make a million dollars a year. I told my boss that I made a million dollars a year, and he was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> did, he, did he? Did he immediately email accounting? <laughs> yeah, he's like, "No, you don't." Dear, I'm like, "Yeah, accounting. no, I don't." What do we? What do we actually pay this crazy lady? No, it's Google no, said okay, that I'm we're I'm good. worth a eleven million dollars, and my claim to fame was when I won the Stock Eliminator World Championship. World Championship. championship. Yes. World Championship, which is how I'm going to start uh, introducing you this week. Here comes <laughs> Erica Enders, Enders, Stock Eliminator World Champion sister, according to yep. the internet. Yep, that's me. Yes. How did yeah, I? How, how, how did I have to introduce you at your wedding, uh, 
Courtney. I didn't care. You just had to introduce Erica as Courtney's sister. That's what it was. Yeah. I there you go. Yeah. There you go. There and you then, go. Hey, um, um, look, Derek says Erica went to Houston to get her hair done. Are you cheating that is on in the Morgan? documentary? Are you is Derek is, is spot on. I go to Houston every six weeks to get my hair done because I'm way, not getting my hair done in Oklahoma. By the way, your, I thought Morgan does your hair. Doesn't she live in like she Georgia? does her, her she does her um like media oh, her day stuff. And, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, watching yeah. Richard during that point, he's like, she got to go to Houston get her hair done. We can get you get your hair done here. And Erica's like, I ain't going to get my hair done in Woodywood, Oklahoma. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, just, you said look. All you all you need for proof on how well they cut hair in Winniewood, Oklahoma, is to look at Richard. Exactly. Yeah, right. How far is how far is that shot from the Tiger King guy? That guy. It, it, it's literally across the interstate. Like we're at the same exact exit. You go over the overpass, and he's like right on the other side. Okay, wait. So did so did you guys know that he was certifiably insane before the documentary? Oh yeah, they used to come to our shop all the time and bring the little baby tigers, and they run around the engine shop. And yep. um, Richard's daughter would go over there all the time. And Courtney and I went a couple times, and they have like monkeys and snakes and all kinds Drags. of other animals. Wolves. Right. You can you can get in the wolves den. Cool. Yeah, yeah but you cool. he was definitely crazy. But I mean. Cool guy, he was always in the news. Like yeah. he would he would randomly be in the news and Blake Scott on our team. He's like, Paul's Valley ain't been the same since Uncle Joe ain't throwing his Christmas parade. <laughs> so true. I gotta go hang out in Winniewood. Jason Winniewood. We gotta go make a trip. Out. We need to we go have a great location. How how do this, how do we how do we get there? We gotta we gotta plan this around a race. Well, you uh, Dallas, Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. What are we gonna you do? Drive, to Dallas, gonna drive only... back from it's, two it's only a two-hour drive. Yeah, I know, but then where am I going to drive to after I go to Winniewood? You can drive back to Dallas and catch your plane, or you can drive to Oklahoma City, which is one hour, or Dallas is two hours. Okay. And let me tell you something what happened last week. Like, the most exciting thing since I've lived there. They Wait, had is this a, what we were texting about? The manhunt? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this guy from up in the city was being chased by a cop well he loses control of his car at our shop exit and crashes and then him and the cop get in this gunfight and the bad guy shoots the cop and randomly shoots this poor dump truck worker that's on the construction site and then he's like in the wind they apprehended one of his friends um but this guy is in the wind right so they have like OSBI, FBI, um, the Rangers are down there. Like it is insane. They have 1500 uh, law enforcement officers and they're at our shop exit. So their command center generator goes down. So we got a motorhome off of our lot and we took it over there and they used our motorhome as the command center. Well, then this crazy rainstorm came in and we opened up our shop to these guys and um, ordered like a bazillion pizzas and we had like over a thousand law enforcement officers at uh at El Chapo in Woodywood, Oklahoma, trying to catch this really bad guy. So yeah. Did they catch him? I don't know that yet, but I don't think so because Declan, so. my my back half guy, texted me last night and he's like, hey, can I go stay at your house? Because all these cops are still at the shop. And I was like, yeah, go for it. So I don't I think they're still there. Did the cops survive? He did. He's going to be okay. Did the construction worker survive? He did not. He was killed on site and super like random, wrong place, wrong time, stray bullet hit him and dead. That's why you, you just never freaking know what's going to happen. But yeah, that guy, he's, he's a bad guy. He just got out of prison three months ago for maiming his girlfriend, which he seems like a really stand up guy. Not and then cool. he shot a police officer. Hey, and Jason, Jason, say it. Not cool. Naming your girlfriend, <laughs> not, not cool. Not cool. Naming your girlfriend. So, not anyways, cool. he's on the run. Perfect I hope example. Allie Bland is still watching because if she is, she's on the floor right now, uh, like I... uncontrollably <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I will never, ever, ever publicly tell the story of why that's so funny because it's just the greatest inside. Oh no, like, you can't. You, I've you gone can't. my whole life wanting to have one of those inside. I will be oh. seventy-five years old and. The four of us Jason, will be. Jason Galvin, having cool. an inside Not joke. Cool. 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 Very cool. cool. Maybe your girlfriend yeah. going to jail. Not, Not cool. cool. Not cool. Oh, Not cool. now I remember. I'm like, what are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Welcome to the party. 
Welcome to Allie the party. Bland. Thank you. Not cool. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Allie, Eric Enders. Allie Bland, cool. <laughs> um, I was gonna say something about Winniewood before y'all said that. Now I can't even remember. Winniewood, Oklahoma, not cool. Not <laughs> cool. Not cool. Not Definitely cool. not cool. Tiger King, though, being close to the Tiger King during COVID, cool because cool. we did um, 2020 for April Fools. We did a full blown photo shoot because that was when it was big on Netflix, and did a hero card, printed hero cards of Chase having the Tiger King sponsored pro stock car, and that he was going to be oh. a driver, and people freaking believed it. So they believed it. I don't know why, but it was the best April Fool's joke we've ever okay, done. Okay, wait, wait. Somebody call Bo and Randy Lynn right now, because if they haven't I figured know. out what they're doing with the car in Vegas, it should be a Tiger King car. I think Halloween's going to be a bust this year, guys. Really? Why? Unfortunate. Because it's because just all of a sudden Chase here. Because stupid Chase and Jenna are getting married, and like yeah, like you know, there's a lot going they got, on. They got to ruin the weekend. Okay, like they're going to take away. We're all going to be focused on them now. Got to make it all about them. I got to get them a gift. I told oh. her that my presence is their present, and I'm also I'm not going to the therapist. So, oh well, that'll do it. I'm not going yeah. to the yeah. wedding, so I guess I don't need to get him a gift, right? Yeah. My gift, my gift will be saying congratulations on the PA at some point. Erica, what would you get him? Anything exciting? No, but I want to get him something good because I didn't get him anything for their bridal shower, couple shower, this shower, that shower. I said I want to get something really badass that you're going to be like. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, yeah, Erica gave us that for our wedding. But yeah, I don't know what yeah. that is, so I'm still working on that. If you have any ideas, send them my way. Are you ready? Cool, give you cool, a- cool wedding gifts. Cool. Hey, thanks. Yeah. Telling the cool, not cool story, not cool. Not Sorry. cool. Not cool. My not aunt cool. gave me an old-time, like, uh, old wooden, an old wooden ship, uh, an old wooden level, and it had a, like, play, uh, like a little placard on it said, you know, like like this level you got to keep your relationship in the middle or whatever i don't know what it said it's in my blah, house blah. Place. i don't even know but i thought that was kind of a cool gift courtney what um, was your, what was the coolest wedding gift you got when you got married that one time i just had a really funny answer come through my head and i can't say it <laughs> um, oh that's what private chat's for go ahead um <laughs> Um, to be honest, we didn't do gifts because we had everybody, oh, hush, Erica. We had everybody come to the Caymans and we had a vacation. (laughs) That is what private chat's for. (laughs) Well, earlier when you said about your internet, I thought that was on the real internet and I was like, oh, but it was over there. (laughs) Oh, so Anyway, we had everybody come to the Cayman Islands, and so we didn't do any gifts. And some people just sent us like activities for our honeymoon. So, um, your gift to them was having Jason Logan as your DJ. Yes. Yeah. And Erica trying yeah. to DJ. And Jason's had- like, nope, that's going to be a flop. I'm like, no, it's not. It's going to be so flop. good. Flop. It was we, a flop. Had, we had an elite DJ. Like, literally, our DJ was phenomenal. And and even at that, I'm still upset that I didn't know Jason Logan at the time. Come on, it was still- it was the absolute game changer because we were supposed to have this whole wedding outside, on the sand with the water coming up, and there was like the Caymans had its first storm, 100 year storm, yeah, yeah, and so we had to have the party upstairs with no windows, no nothing, and I was quite upset, but Jason Logan made the wedding. I was happy it was inside. I didn't want to be all. I'm gonna. We're gonna do. We should do a, a vow renewal. That way, just so I can have Jason Logan be a DJ. Yeah. Like, that for no other reason. Oh, not for like, you know, just renewing your love and vows of your marriage? <laughs> no. That's, that's, <laughs> that's under control bad. already. That's under it control. It is. You do have a really cool wife. That's under, I have a badass <laughs> yeah, she's wife. Gone. Yeah. You I do. Married and her, I... yeah. It's kind of wild. Well, maybe you two can get on the stick and find us some new boyfriends and let's go. We can go do your thing. What are we doing we, here? We can have two more weddings. Yeah. <laughs> Look at our faces. <laughs> yeah, they're like, uh, yeah, not on the horizon. Look at. Them. Don't worry, Erica. This PowerPoint is going to be amazing. You're going to be like, dude, I got to go. I got this guy's sold me. Not, I can't if, wait. If 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 Look, I don't if marry you this don't guy, actually, I'm bringing to Winniewood to sell RVs. If you don't actually make a PowerPoint, I'm going to make one for you. Oh, what? I, listen, I'm already working on it. I got some okay? animation happening. I'm literally, I, I dude, I got a guy in. We can hire on Fiverr. It'd be great. Yeah. 
This is yeah. the reason why. Reason number one why Erica should date me. And then, <laughs> and then you're gonna come to Thanksgiving dinner, and Greg's gonna say oh, what? He's gonna be like, "Why? Why did you bring this idiot over here?" <laughs> So that's exactly what he's going to say. Do oh, you know what I love? Greg. You know what I love about this podcast is it has no plot. Zero whatsoever. <laughs> like, this is, by the way, by the way, by the way, everybody, everybody say hi, Kelly Crandall, who just texted me that she can't comment on the live deal, but she thinks, hi, Kelly. Our, she thinks our conversation is terrible. So, yeah, you should she hear what awesome. you should have heard me. I kind of, well, I kind of talked about this the last time. Kelly Crandall wanted to be on this show, and I was like, we're going to send, we're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have an anxiety camp. I have people that I have people are anxiety. I have, I have Kelly Crandall's sticker on the back of my computer right here. You, I we owe her we owe her a Lisa Drag sticker. Yeah, she was yelling at me about that too. I love how yeah. getting yelled at by all you women. It's awesome. Let's Courtney, anything really else? Getting yelled at by women. Yeah, Courtney, he anything is. else you want to you want to expound on your travel? Why, he's frozen on my end. My this hey, Admiral's I don't know. is not good. Yeah, not yeah. Good. Look, we got we got we're we've we've hit our hour time limit. We'll have to do this again. Yeah. So let's give Courtney the floor so that she can um you know express her hatred at something. Yes, I know, right? <laughs> well, really what's on my mind today is my water bill. So I got <laughs> Erica, when she said when she this. said water. All I could think of my water breaking. I was like, what? <laughs> that's all I thought of. That's all I heard. That's all I heard. And then she said, Bill, so I was like, uh, oh, go ahead. National, national announcement. National announcement. They built life. a house. <laughs> hey, Greg, congratulations. <laughs> Grandbabies. Thanks, guys. No, they built a house uh, next to my house, and there's uh -huh. a leak in my um, pipes, and I thought we got it fixed in June, but I don't like check my bank account every day. Well, today I was checking my email and I got my water bill. And for the last three months, my water bill has been over $500 and it's $620. So they never fixed the leak. So I'm four months in now and I had a full blown panic attack getting off the plane right before this, because now I got to call the construction company. I got to deal with the irrigation system. It's not even just the money. I got to deal with the shit and I don't want to deal with the shit. So, so just that's what's clear, on my mind your water today. On, your water's on like auto pay? Oh yeah. Yeah. So you've just been auto paying like five hundred dollars each of the last couple of months. Yeah, and, and what's funny is I'm like, man, I've been so pretty broke this to... summer. Hey, uh, you know what's really funny about that? Million dollar, million dollar salary lady, right? There. Yep. Erica, like, how do you yeah. not notice when five hundred dollars is gone in your bank account when you make a million dollars? Well, I did. I've been I've been pretty broke lately because of Greece and right. all the things. So I just Again, thought I was back tight. to the beginning of the show. First world problems. Whatever. Very much so. Do you know how much my water bill was? I just paid it before I left because in Sulphur, Oklahoma, they don't have auto pay. They're actually yeah. not even really sure what a credit card is. So it was forty-four dollars. I had mine was twenty-five, and I live in California, so I don't even know how that six hundred and eight. You're not look at Jason's face. <laughs> Gosh, that's the best frozen face ever. Wow. So yeah, that's what grinds my gears. Courtney Anders edition today. Everybody's frozen right now. Yeah. No, it was Eric, just anything, you, anything, anything you want to get off your frozen. chesty? There we go. We're back. <laughs> no, I, think I just I'm got, good. I just got a, I got an SBA. I, Chase, I know. Can you see me? I just got an SBA <laughs> loan. Uh, <laughs> Did you have a stroke? <laughs> that's what he kind of looks like. Everybody's frozen. Look at that. No, you're frozen. I hate to break it to you. We're, we're all moving. Good. You're frozen. That's the best wild jason logan before you go give me one of your travel your latest travel woes oh god well he's frozen courtney <laughs> i i can tell he sat on an airplane the other day next to a woman who was cutting her toenails <gasps> he said she would cut it and then she'd go yeah that was a couple races ago yeah, yeah. gross Gross, hardcore. Gross. Here's the thing: I don't think feet should be allowed to be open on an airplane anyway. Okay, so oh, you your and shoes off. so time out, time out. So you and Jason Logan live in the same world. I'm with E. Don't take your shoes off. I personally happen to wear sandals on every airplane I'm on, but I wear sandals. I wear sandals only. I don't ever take my feet out of the sandals, and and because I'm a good Christian, I get a pedicure like every other week, so my toes always look good. Fair. Okay. okay? Don't okay. your feet get it's cold on an airplane, though? No, it's super comfortable. I like, uh -huh. dude, I keep my house at like 68, okay? So airplanes are fine. They're, they're great. Look, okay. it's 90 degrees in Texas right now, and this is how I fly. Full-blown pants, full-blown sweatshirt. That is wild. That doesn't surprise me. All right. I'm going to end this because Jason Logan disappeared on us.
I'm going to play the song for him. I don't have the song, so we're, we're going to sing it. Are you guys ready? Okay. Yeah. Dun, da, da, dun, dun. Oh, wait. Here he comes back. Just in time. Dun, da, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. dun. Can add yourself. There he is. Oh, I, I, I kicked. Hi, welcome back. I was just singing the song for you. Anyways, we're leaving now, J-Lo. Oh, we're welcome leaving. Back. Okay, cool. We're leaving. Hey, it was, hey, thank you guys for having us. It was a blast. We thank appreciate you. Ladies, you. ladies uh, what are we doing in Dallas? Are we going to win? Are we not going to win? What's happening? Yes, no. we're it's winning. Definitely. Erica is going to sit on Oliver. On. And Angel is going to be there. So Erica gets to... Um, do the ceremonial thing of the passing of the torch with Angel there. We didn't want to win without Angel there, so we waited till Dallas. Oh, got it. Okay. That's hey, wait a second. I, I, need to, I, I need to know about this Champions Dinner. What are we having at the Champions Dinner? Oh, I got to pick the entree and I picked filet. You're welcome. Oh, nice. Are Where you going? going? No, I was going to change my flight just to go and hang out and sit with you two. Uh, That's awesome rude. People. I know, but I, I, I don't even know what we're talking about. So I got the Champions Dinner sweet. on Wednesday. No the whole stampede that. of speed thing. Anyway, I, Champions my first time is I, My first time I've been to the Motorplex. I've never been to the Motorplex. <gasps> You're right. about to have so much fun. It's this the is last, like a cultural it's the last event. Track. It's, like the, it's the last track on my on my list. So This race is a vibe. They do an amazing job. The fan fest, the it. hats, the belts, all over there. Oliver will shit right on the starting line. Nobody cares. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he did it this year. Yeah. Remember in the winter circle weird. picture, they put the ladder up for me to get on him and take a picture. And I am so thankful that he pooped before I got on him because had he done that when I sat down on him, it would not, my guys would have never let me live it down. But yeah, it's a, it's a great event. The whole stampede of speed, 10 grand for pro stock for going low on Friday night. I'm going to go ahead and sit on the saddle. That was that. That's, that's what we all really want to see. Let's yes. be honest. We yes. want to watch Courtney ride the saddle. Yeah. Well, she, well, I don't, listen, I'm, I don't drive. You can come do it. As a girl at the bar in Indy told me, I'm not a driver and I never will be. So that's true. That's true. Only Erica gets to sit that's on true. the saddle. That's listen, true. she doesn't I, get I have a meeting. I must go. Okay, by the way, fine. by Jason Galvin. I'm, I'm going to say goodbye to these. By the way, Jason Galvin's the best. See you later, buddy. We'll see you in Den or Dallas. Uh, if you guys are part of any of these conversations that Courtney and I have off screen and uh, dude, that, that, that girl telling you not a driver's story. Fantastic. That is, that is pure Courtney Enders at her best. And I try and behave. I'm 37 years old almost. And I've, been, I've done a really good job of being more professional and just trying to be calm. I don't even comment back on people on social media anymore, but if you saw me at the embassy in Indy, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So great. There, All right. there are certain people that shouldn't get opinions, her being one of them, because she's not a stock eliminator world champion like you, Courtney. That's true, Courtney. <laughs> and like the, the girls that talk crap to me, they can't do a burnout in the automatic car that barely goes 10 seconds. So don't talk to me. You know what I'm saying? By the way, can uh, I tell you can I tell you another deep dark secret that Jason has? What I've never done a burnout ever in my life. Even in a streetcar? Even in a streetcar. What? We have to do one. It's one of those things I'm going to need to do mm -hmm. before I die. I got to burn out. I got to like. I got to just melt some tires or something. I don't know. Are you coming to our race in February? Possibly. Okay. I um, think I might have my stock eliminator car ready by then. And if I do, you can do your first burnout in that. What? <laughs> yeah. I don't have to have a special license or anything to do that. Will you show Not me how that to do race. it? Stock eliminator. Well, hey, you, you watch your mouth. I'm a world champion stock eliminator. I know, and I love stock, and I'm that I love it so much that I'm going to race it. So I'm not talking crap. So don't even start with me. But I think you should do a burnout in that before I put you in my pro stock car because the pro stock car is a little harder than the stock eliminator car. That's what she said. But it's going to be uh, badass. I, yeah. All right. Cool. So there you go. Uh, I'm not going to kill myself, am I, in this thing? No. Right. I'm the safety princess. I'll make sure you have on all your gear. All right, cool. I'm in. Yes. Do I have to have my own fire suit? Uh, mine probably won't fit you, but sure. Yeah, you can probably wear Richards. Ah, Richards will fit. Or Royce Lee is one of them. Oh, man. This Notice how nobody asked Courtney if she wants to drive the stock limiter car when she's the champion. You can drive it, Courtney. Jason can do a burnout and then you can race it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Queen Erica. <laughs> It's not even my car, so you can ask King Twist his beard. <laughs> there you go. 
So yeah, I, I I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be. Well, I, I shouldn't say pretty sure, but I'm I'm planning on it. Let's put it like that. Jason needs to do a top fuel Harley burnout. Yeah, that's not. No, I'm not, no way. I'm that's where you die. Out. Yeah, that's not happening. I don't need to do any of it, that. They have to wear like a metal plate on their chest, so when it explodes, the pistons don't go through your abdomen. Right. Like that's the first sign. And probably not a good idea. Right. Nope. No, we're not doing that. I'm fine being a spectator. I'm all good, man. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm too old. I'm, I'm definitely older than you, Courtney and Erica. So you got that one on you. Thanks. Yeah. All right. So, ladies, thank you so much. I won't this was fun. Yeah. Hey, I just want to say this was very important to me because I came straight from my airplane to the Admirals Club instead of driving home because this was this important to me. And I will give you a special treat in Dallas when I see you just for doing that. Every time I see you, it's a special treat. See, we're in love. Sorry, Erica. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there goes the PowerPoint. No, uh, no, I'm still going to make that just for. Just no, for... he doesn't like me. We're, he friend zoned me. Change Please. your flight. Change your flight and come to the Champions Dinner. You can be mine and Courtney's plus ones. <laughs> ones listen if i didn't have to wear a referee shirt and make more money than i make at a day at drag racing um i would i would definitely be on a plane to do that you're definitely getting in trouble this week for this podcast oh, i know <laughs> that was four <laughs> things to potentially be yelled at for listen and, i know and it wasn't my fault but i'm gonna be drugged into it because i was yeah like, you are by the yeah. way i i dude i know where a lot of bodies are buried out there you really want to tussle with this guy I'm just it's saying. It's all in good fun. Who cares? They need right. to get, just don't be so uptight. Right, Erica. That's why I'm talking to the uptight queen over here. So right. See, that's going to the PowerPoint. Right there. You're uptight. I'm fun. I can loosen things up. You're a good balance for me. Right. I'm the yin to your yang. No, she's my yin to my yang. Listen, we can all be friends. Okay. <laughs> Can you imagine what Thanksgiving dinner would be like if, if I showed up? Oh my, oh my gosh, it'd be so fun. That would be just out of control. And then your mom would be like, really? That guy? No, my mom would love it. Yeah, she might enjoy it too. I think she loves you. I don't know. She likes Joe Cassell a little bit better. We saw her in some place and she just rattled on Joan. She says, hey, what's up? Jason, just... Look at her, froze it up. All right, I'm playing the music. Okay. This is what Jason Galvin wanted me to play. Okay. This, and goodbye, everybody. I'm sure I got myself in trouble this week, but oh well. Let's see what happens. We'll see everybody in Dallas. Bye bye.